master's uh, matters to attend to. Um, so uh, it's a pleasure to welcome um, Jinda Lee um, from National Central University. So uh, Jinda got his PhD in, from National Central University in 2016, and he was a postdoc there uh, until quite recently. Um, and uh, his main interest is stellar astrophysics. Uh, he's going to tell us about um, HO physics today. So let's welcome the speaker, please. Good afternoon, everyone. So I was really happy to hear the HIA talking about it recent work to everyone. So today we are going to talk about this peculiar mix, HO puppies. But it is not really cat and dog puppies. It's a, it's a constellation. And uh, when I just met uh, Yohua in the early, he said, you just call it whole puppies. That's correct. <laughs> so in this work, uh, we have many people involved. Uh, including Jia Yu and uh, Professor Dao Song and uh, Ye Yongshen bring us to VTF and uh, now Yuan Zi Dashi, Yu Bo Jie, you know, my senior Huang Bo Jie, and we joined the VTF using their data to uh, investigate this object. So, so first, uh, many people know I'm working on BE stocks, and uh, when I met with the H Ho Park. I think it is a BE stocks. But there's an, another opportunity there called IWAMD stocks. So uh, briefly speaking, what are the difference? For BE stock, it is a decretion disk, which means the material was inside to outside, into the interstellar space. And for IWMD star, it's a kind of accretion disk. It's a some companion, core companion, together with white dwarf with a Christian disk. So I will go to the detail because uh, I think last week uh, Professor Niao is here in talking about the, our main results. So we will go to a little bit details about these two kind of objects. So IWND star is a drop nova. So this is new for me and I learned that feel I find a way to classify the, the nova. So they are briefly can be classified in two kinds of Nova, Nova. One is thermonuclear fusion in white group. So like people know classical Nova, supernova. It explodes on the white group. And for the others are called drop Nova, which means uh, they have thermal instability in accretion disk. Then it, the outburst trigger in the accretion disk. So we have a couple of cases like the can or today what we want to tell IWM and this stuff. We can briefly see their light curve. It's just uh, the normal space and the suddenly brightening and going back. And for the can, sometimes it has some standstill states and uh, going fainter and upwards and upwards again. Then for the IWMD type stars, uh, people think they have eclipsing light light curve and all similar to the, the other phenomena similar to drop nova, <coughs> normal drop nova. Okay, and uh, for one model was raised to explain this kind of uh, <coughs> phenomena. So there are two kind of disks. One is a uh, non-tilted disk, the normal thing. So the mass flow is from outside to inside, and uh, the outburst in the other way is from inside to outside. So we call it inside out outburst for this kind of non-tilted normal ones, and uh, so. In, in, in this kind of this, sometimes they will shrink, they will disappear. Then some, when the more mass uh, supply it, then it go outwards again. And for another kind, we call tilted disk. Uh, in this figure, we we think this good figure for talking about the disk <coughs> is the some inclination. So the mass from secondary can not only go to the outer part like this one, but also can flow into the inner part. So for this kind of uh, tilted disk model, the mass flow can reach both sides, and inside and outside. And uh, the mainly different part is, for this kind of case, the, the inner part of the disk is always stay in hot state. And uh, <coughs> for outer part, outer disk, it, it, in the stability working, so which means it has very hot inner disk, always like that. And uh, for the outside of disk, it sometimes happening some outburst. 
sorry, so yep. there are two things that I have to make sure. So yep. Outburst, so what kind of outburst are you talking about? Outburst in just luminosity outburst? Yeah, or luminosity so, outburst. So just uh, without the wind. So inside, so for example, inside outburst, outburst, so outburst from inside to outside means the luminosity becomes brighter from inside yeah, to yeah, outside. Yeah, that's exactly. I mean, so, so, the, so brightness on the accretion disk, is that what you mean? Yes. Okay, right. Uh, the next one is that no market is actually this mass flow can reach means the mass inflow. Yeah, inflow. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, mass inflow. So, uh, this year, one group from Kyoto, Kyoto University, Kimura et al., they raised this kind of uh, tilted disk model. So, uh, from top panel to bottom panel is different extent of the tilt. For this one, it's most tilted. So, which means uh, uh, the star can uh, have the uh, normal states and the brightening state. And uh, if they are more tilted, you see different phenomena, like these small dips in the, in the normal state. Yeah. So, so this kind of things is just pre uh, published this year. So that's why they catch our eyes on it. And uh, for the lighter example, there are two examples. This one, D cap is non tilted, which means uh, if the mass is sufficiently supplied, the star, the disk is keep on the sun center luminosity. But but if the mass supply from the secondary is somehow lower, it becomes I think it's a little bit like engine. Sometimes xi huo, yeah. So it's sometimes uh, bended and bright again, bended bright again. And for the tilted one, we don't see this kind of things happen. We saw they are uh, brightening upper space, upper space, all the way to the uh, time. So this is the flight curve of both cases. Okay. So uh, here it goes. We go to another opportunity. Is B E stars. So B E star is the rapidest rotating living star, rapid rotating main sequence stars. So if you saw the people on the reference from all hot star to cool star and their rotating speed is all the way go up to the 300 kilometers per second in the B type star and uh, for, for the B star is even faster and why it called B star because it has emission so we call it B E stars and uh, interestingly it going down to the O type and uh, this kind of star, because they have fast rotating uh, equatorial part, so it also has some surrounding by light emission region. They have uh, material around the around the central star. So <coughs> previously, we are using PTF, also from Caltech. Uh, we find in the B star and Cat cluster. We study their uh, evolution effect. And we have uh, three papers published. And now we're using ZTF to study uh, more about the photometric variations. And we also do some follow up spectroscopy observation by their emission line variation. Okay, so here we could solve a uh, detail about the variability of BE stars. They are, they are max, they are all kind of variations. You can see eclipsing binary. It's like, like this, like this. And uh, sometimes they have non-radial pulsation. It's a uh, uh, period about less than two days. Or semi-regular outburst. It's less about 10 to 200 days. And sometimes we, we have, we don't know how to classify it, so we call it intermediate periodicity from two to 200 days. Or even circular one, it's long-term variations. What's a non-radial pulsation? Uh, radial, what we know, right? It's easy. It's just like you put a drum in the center. It, it, it like a pet radial. Radial. It's radial. And non-radial is they are... Angular? Yeah, they are three or more. Radial, only one parameter is R. And non-radial is, uh, they are not only R. They are like, a, for example, if you see a, a, a circle as a quarter, they are four quarter, and uh, one is up. Uh, the diagonal one is up. The the other part is down. 
they are more complicated. It's, it's more the more easy. Anyway, it's a uh, <laughs> it's a little bit uh, so a group of people studying it. So if you saw the uh, uh, non-radio position, you will see like this kind of like. And if you see outburst, outburst is a little bit unsymmetric. It's sometimes sudden up and gradually going down. Yes. So so. What I say is uh, bees are uh, because there are many many uh, origin people race say they may be a binary and uh, some the, the secondary create the, the mass and finally become a main, sequ main sequence looking star so it had that kind of fast rotating <coughs> phenomenon so so uh, so uh, from the variability what kind of thing we can solve so if we use the, this simple because bees are rotating that near the critical velocity so uh, but in this kind of uh, velocity still cannot produce that much material on the disk so we need more mechanism including pulsating, pulsation or outburst to create this, this decretion phenomenon so it's a little bit uh, not easy to understand but I use a simple model to say to you if they are too warm and they are underground water there. For this one, the, under, the water is low level, so it's very not easy to go out of the wall. And for the, another one, uh, this one is, the water level is really high, but right to the, the mouth of the wall. So, so we need more things to make a pond around the wall. So mm -hmm. maybe some ripple or some like these geysers outbursting so fill the pool yeah so so uh, that's why we think the mechanism to make this kind of phenomena on BE stars yeah so what about our uh, uh, sub subject HO whole part so this is the light curve before uh, 2015 so you see uh, either this is really early, 1894 to 2014. This is Penn Star data. So we see this very randomly performed light curve. We don't know what it is. And uh, it happened to B star. Some B star, if you go into book, the variable star book, you will say it's a kind gamma casual type variable. It also show a unpredictable outburst in their light curves. So, so people classified HO pop into B stars. And uh, the, this HO pop, we using the ZTF to see a really deep uh, transient effect. So here, uh, the color one is ZTF data. We saw they are 2.5 magnitude drop twice. And not only ZTF, but also ASAS as a uh, see the events. So they, the both light curve can match perfectly. And uh, this kind of things uh, was also seen in IWAMD. It is a star, prototype of IWAMD stars. You see this kind of uh, transit eclipsing light Fainting. Yeah. So we do a, a deep research on this target, and uh, we found they, they don't have any period. We, we can uh, subtract and mean period is about fourteen days, but the shorter one is less than ten days. Longer one is more than one month, and uh, surprisingly, their light curve. We we put this eight event together they are all have the same shape. So this is really unique if it is a B star. We never saw this kind of events previously. And uh, in the beginning, we don't know, even now, we, we're not quite sure what it is. What kind of thing can make non periodic but also same shape uh, transit? Uh, we guess some many options like the spot, very big spot. It's because it dropped about 90% of light or another a, a lot of other options for example if you have many many material in your orbit 
and how come you can make on, on one hand is non period, on the other hand have the same shape of the this kind of light curve. So we are not quite confident about to explain this event. But this star showing uh, many many uh, outbursts, regular events we can study. So here, uh, if you go, go to the uh, same bed, you will see this still B star on the on their front page. And uh, in this 2020, this IWN D star includes H O pop into their part of this kind of stars, and they compare their objects to like this F Y wall. They have very similar behavior. So. So what exactly HO cookies is? It's a B star or IWN D star. So here I make a, a summary of both of the star what's are their feature. So both of them have hydrogen line, H alpha line. And uh, for B star is a B time and sequence star. For IWN D star is the mass transfer binary with accretion disk. And uh, B star the it is the mass load process. And for uh, another one is a mass accretion process. So, so the key one is the, here, the light curve is gamma k short type light curve. It's quite chaotic. Uh, and for IWN star is eclipsing light light curve. And uh, people think the BEs are they are fast rotating because of binary interactions. Yeah. So pr briefly speaking, they are have all these features. So to understand more about the natural part, we carry out the better observation by our hands. So before this line, uh, we have uh, WISE, uh, ASA system, and after this, we have DTF. And after 2018, we bring the uh, ruling involved observations. So, so we think we're doing a very hard job after 2015, we collecting more than 25,000 data points to, to see the detail of the uh, variations. So here is the 0.5 magnitude outburst. So we, we, here we saw this also showing the similar pattern for, for of actual puppet similar to, to this drop nova IWND type. You see this? outburst. And uh, for the example, this is a typical prototype of drop nova. You see this uh, brightening events, very similar. Or another kind of uh, IWND stars showing this kind of events. So we think this semi-regular outburst feature is not still in the known B star. So by this part, we, we don't think it is uh, what put in the same bed. And uh, it also showing a rapid change of outburst duration. See, in the 2015, the both peak of the this brightening is about 26 days, and uh, 22 days in 2016. It's all the way to now 2019. It become 61 days. Yeah. So this uh, periodic analysis showing that uh, the the event's duration is changing and uh, very rapidly. So, how about the time scale of the days? You see this one, this one is uh, one brightening. And you see, you will see this kind of uh, small scales variability. Yeah. And uh, we resolve it uh, using the phase dispersion minimizations. We think this phase is about 3.9 days. Yeah. So it quite match the Tildix model for the Tildix one. It has this, we don't show in this that kind of dix like, small dix like <laughs> phenomena, but instead we have this kind of, uh, you can say it's like a sharp thing, small sharp things shape. Yes. And uh, we also, see some uh, uh, shorter variation in our time scale. This is uh, DTF data, and uh, uh, in some days, we, we don't know why, it observes this field of view. 
hundreds and hundreds of times. And uh, we saw this kind of, we, we don't know is it a pulsating or not. We're still digging on data about other observation. But this, you see this sudden jump or this end type shape. And uh, because of our observation, we, we go to some meeting and we found uh, AABSO people uh, involved. And they also using very frequently observation to see this star. So, so both together, we believe this AABSO data is true about this kind of variation. And uh, together with, uh, because looting, we have the triple. Triple is the polarization per, per millimeter. We can measure the polarization. And uh, in these few days, we think we observe some polarization variation of the HO pop. So, <coughs> so in summary of the variability type, because there are a lot of uh, things on HO pop. So, uh, first thing, because of 2.5 magnitude peaks, we, we focus on this object. And we saw the 0.5 magnitude brightening, or outburst. And it shows polarimetry variations. And for short time scale, they may have 3.9 days variations. And uh, later we are talking about color. The color also showing uh, some phenomena. So we're talking about a little bit about uh, uh, the what mechanism make the star like this. So for the uh, the binary of the draw nova, the, the secondary and the white draw primary, uh, they are mass transfer rate. What is mass transfer rate? You can imagine it is the fuel to the disk. If you have less fuel to the critical accretion rate you have instability of accretion. So, so the disk is like a reservoir, and when you get a nerve or mass, it light up. But for the uh, IWMD type star, or DK, their uh, mass transfer rate is approximately to the critical uh, mass transfer. So, so it was showing some, some, sometimes in a stable phase and the unstable phase. Yes. And uh, for previously people working on the simulation, this is uh, HL14. They, they're showing that like this. Um, you see this is, the red one is mass transfer rate, mass from the dominant star. It has sudden jump if the, the star had this kind of mass transfer. So correspondingly, the mass accretion rate on this will be like this. And uh, we will see photometrically this kind of things. So all these uh, IWMD star have this kind of uh, eclipsing like transit, including our HO pop. So, so we believe this kind of phenomena is because of the uh, mass, transfer rate, mass transfer rate changing. And uh, here we go to the spectra. We took a uh, spectra uh, individually in this, uh, we call it a uh, standstill phase. And uh, in outburst, we also took a spectra here. And uh, for this kind of spectra, we see the black one here. This one is very like a BE star, the, the spectrum with emission light here. But fortunately, we took this spectra uh, five meter in the Paloma, we saw a lot of features here. You see the metal line, and along with HR5 emission. So one key point is here. We call it Bowen Florence. It's some metal lines here. So we could see this phenomena on other IWND stuff. This IWND, when it outbursts, it also shows this uh, Bowen Florence. So, so this uh, this outburst is differ from the B star like this. B star, if B star outburst, we will show uh, from less emission line to showing up the emission line, then going back to normal state, no emission line again. So uh, for the this kind of draw nova, we could see the feature is when they are in outburst, many metal line appears, but we don't see that in the B stars. So here is the color. Uh, 
here we, we presented a, 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 a section of Likert between two outbursts. So, so some G minus V, G minus R, here it's not easy to look. But if we collect all the data, put it into the color matrix diagram, we will show that uh, the bluer the star, it has brighter, it, it, it has higher luminosity. So, so previously, uh, the Takami he wrote here. He held this uh, spectroscopy spectroscopy uh, uh, precision. We also apply the uh, uh, spectroscopy monitoring from CFHT, and uh, we got eight light, eight continuous light. So from the uh, stand still phase to the peak before the outburst. And we saw here, when the star is spent, it has stronger emission line. And uh, as the star getting brighter, we saw the emission line become smaller. The, the wind, the absorption wind is appear. And uh, it's possibly because the disk, because the disk equation the material on the disk, and uh, it becomes optical thick during brightening. So here is uh, another thing. Uh, this is the uh, hot star uh, HR divergence in Gaia DR2. So previously we think it's a maybe a confused of B, e type, B type of star. B type of star, uh, the absolute magnitude is about uh, minus 5 magnitude to 0 magnitude. It's around here. And here is another kind of star called sub -drop. It's a 5 magnitude. It's, it's the same brightness, the same luminosity to our sun. So, so because we don't know the distance, if we don't know the distance, these two kinds of stars will be very similar. They have similar spectrum, and we are not easy to have the spectrum on the uh, outburst. So, so for most of the bees, are, they take the sample, it's, oh, okay, I see it once. I take the uh, light curve, it's maybe not that, uh, the coverage is not that well, just like HO pump. So we think is that the possibility to make a confusion. So the answer is quite interesting. This is the, uh, my favorite part of this research. Here is the SED of HO pump. Uh, for the green one, it's a subluminous B, B type star with Gaia distance. So for the blue, uh, for the green one, we fit the data. Not only fit the data, but also fit the Gaia distance. But if we take it as a, a, a B-type star, it will be very, very far away. It's beyond the galaxy. It, so uh, for the temperature fit, it's about B1 main sequence. But it should be at 16 kPc. So it's too far away for uh, this kind of star. I'm that far. So we, we move out the B-type B, B star from the SED. And here is a subluminous B type star, this green one, along with the 4000 Kelvin equation disk. And the superposition together, we, we think this is uh, what this HO path looks like. So, uh, to compare other novae on Gaia data, HO path is, is in this location. So, it's quite like uh, other nova can appear in these regions. And uh, I, I think it's uh, normally we think it is uh, the, because of the SED and the Gaia, we 100% rule out of the uh, possibility of being uh, bright, luminous BE stars. Okay, so here comes to the summary. To investigate the nature of HO path, we collected uh, nearly 30,000 data points and uh, it's a very long baseline from 1894 to 2020 and uh, instead of a B star, HO pop is a IWMD type drop nova a company with a hot super subnumerous object and uh, we think with, if you only have limited amount of photometry and the spectroscopy data uh, the subnumerous IWMD star is very easily misclassified as a 
normal B star. So, so if you pull observation coverage, you see the B-like variations photometrically. And uh, if you spectral take, because most of the time it's in, it is not in brightening, so you took the, the spectral on the normal face, and you took the B-like spectrum. So without Gaia data, if we, we have the star, but we don't have the Gaia data, uh, the high cadence photometry and the spectroscopy monitoring are necessary for the classifications. So I, I make a, a comparison table here. Uh, it will be the final slide. And, uh, and I, because uh, uh, people introduced me as an NCU postdoc, but I, in fact, I just leave my job uh, on the June because uh, family issue. So these two months, I working at home myself. So I have to thank my family and my little boys for their support. So thanks for your attention. I will stop here. Uh, we have good question. We have it, it is very important point. Uh, if you saw this point, here is a data point. It's galaxy. So I am not sure. This is I think far UV. Yeah, I I think so. If, if I I, I searched on that, but I don't found the X-ray data. No, so I was just checking. Yeah, yeah, I think we, we, I have been doing the same thing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so what's a theoretical explanation for this model to spend uh, bluer and brighter uh, in the Oh, cool, cool. Uh, uh, we, uh, this is the prototype. IWND, and uh, uh, it had very good observation sequence from from outburst to the standstill. So you see when it was outburst, it become blue. So outburst bright and blue, and the standstill is faint and the red. So I, even though we don't have this kind of spectra, because when we use CFT is super high resolution, so uh, for the continual part is barely detected. But we believe this kind of thing is similar. Like uh, when it getting brighter, it, it was blue. When it getting fainter, it was red. And like, I mean, like, how do you explain that in the, this model? Oh, this model, oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, uh, it is a uh, accretion disk, and uh, when it accrete, it, it may be light up. When it light up, it keep accreting material. So the, the, the atmosphere will be forming, atmosphere of the disk. So when you have atmosphere of disk, you will have this kind of H alpha wave showing up. Did you catch that? I think so. You have good stellar physics. Line width. So suppose it's a you, P star, then according to him, it's a fast for tennis star. Yeah. So I, I would expect that having a special line width. Yeah, uh, you are talking about the. Uh, yeah, I understand you. So for the B star, uh, it's, it's a, 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 a little bit long story, but I tried to make it short. Uh, in, it, in the very beginning, people observing the B star. And uh, and they an analysis their spectrum and see their line width is very special. So we think they are rotating very very fast. And uh, because it is very the, the observation of this uh, high resolution is not that easy as the low resolution. So and this is not the main reason. The main reason is people gradually believe that if you have emission line, 
and uh, we don't no need to do the further observation. It has it is phase rotation stuff. Yeah. So I believe what you say. If we do, if we have the doing the sensing high resolution spectroscopy observation on both, we will solve the differences. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> I got CFG data and the uh, HO pop is a 14 magnitude object and uh, its emission line and H alpha continue is it's okay but other part of the continue is I, I, I don't think it is uh, detected with a nerve signal yeah okay you also show us uh, the, the period of uh, the change of the Yes, yes, uh, it's here. 20, 30 days. Yeah. Yeah, I'm wondering why it can 60 days in the lab and in these two years. Is that correct? I mean, yeah, it's, it's correct. It's real time. We, we, we are waiting this peak on uh, March. So oh, is that the day? Is that the day? So I'm sure you didn't miss, I mean, could, could that be 30 days instead? Yeah. You, you put a good point. So we think it is not a, not a, we miss the point. The width of the uh, the width of the outburst is about five days, and uh, according to our coverage, we we cannot skip skip the if there are any outbursts in the middle. Yeah. Uh, any other question? Is it possible to detect a companion in this uh, either way of these data points? You mean the... Uh, oh, I think... I think... I... A helium line or any other thing that you expect from the, the mm. joint? Good, good issue. You mean spectroscopically? Yeah. Detect the, the companion? I I check I check the line of normal CV the, the equation disk of the white drove and the the the, the sub drove hot sub drove they have very similar feature mm -hmm. yeah this is one thing and uh, yeah yeah I I think so your point is if if in if it is not outburst, we saw some feature here. Mm -hmm. Outburst is the feature of the disk, mm -hmm. and uh, when it, it is not outburst, its feature of the should be secondary. Well, the, the disk is fed by the secondary. The disk, disk is fed by the companion. Yeah, 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 yeah. companion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you can also call that. So, you, if you ask me, uh, this. But uh, when we see the companion, I would say yes, because we saw this in standstill, mm -hmm. and this emission line is very likely from the companion. Mm -hmm. If it is to be a subluminous B type star, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, for your a little bit information, a subluminous uh, B type star is a helium star. Mm -hmm. and the entire star is uh, almost ninety nine percent of helium. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so. You're right. I, I should saw more features here if it is a uh, case. Okay. Uh, any other final question? Maybe I can squeeze in a tiny question. Maybe a bit bigger. But a um, long time ago, I read a few papers on B star disks, mm. and they talked about things like um, eccentric modes in the like maybe also one uh, modes in the disk that causes long term variability. Eccentric disk. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering. Any of that is happening here, or oh, I think you reading about the B X ray binary. I don't know. I I think <laughs> so anyway, it was a long uh, time ago. so so the the B X ray binary is uh, B E star together with uh, probably uh, most likely neutron star and probably black hole. Yeah. So so they have very essentially like elliptic. They have the close part, how to say the word, parsing. Anyway, the, 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 the black hole or the neutron star can close into the, to the B star and very, go very far away. So I believe that case, the disk was, 
Yeah. Tool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, that's the only thing I can think about <laughs> <laughs> related to these stars. Okay. Anyway, um, we can finish uh, a little bit earlier today. Um, Chinzo will be here uh, around this afternoon, uh, presumably. Um, so you can talk to him afterwards as well. Uh, let's thank the speaker, please. <laughs>